Alrighty, everybody. Once again, it is psychology flipped. And this is Mrs. Clemens, your favorite psychology teacher that you've ever had, which I'm the only psychology teacher you've ever had, so that's why I'm your favorite. Um, and as always, keep calm, study psychology, because it's so much fun. All right, so we are on part three of four of our body and behavior series. It is more exciting than a barrel of monkeys, which I don't know where that comes from. Hmm. Okay, um, so now, <laughs> I'm sorry, again, I'm laughing at my animations. I can't help myself. Uh, now we're talking about the cortex. So the last time we were talking about the, the general lobes of the brain. Now we are talking about, um, or I'm sorry, the, the general areas of the brain. Now we're going to talk about the cortex, which has some lobes. I get confused myself. All right, so, so you're actually writing the cortex, the five lobes, and then you're writing frontal. And um, the, the thing we're being simple with, we are crazy simplifying thinking, all right? That's it, all right? We talked a little bit more about it um, previously in the, the, last, the last video, but for here, thinking and evidently snapping. Um, not very loud, my husband makes fun of me. Prietal, uh, right back here, sensing because you sensed my snap. Uh, temporal. Um, where are you, my fun little temporal? Right here, that's language and hearing. So that makes sense. It's kind of your ears. Um, occipital. That's our vision. And especially, I know that you guys have learned, um, and actually a couple of my kids have even told me that when they've had concussions, specifically when they've gotten hit in the back of the head, that um, they don't see as well afterwards. One of my students actually told me how they got a concussion um, and then afterwards they need to wear glasses. So um, that's why, because that's the, the part of the brain. And then the last lobe, so remember five lobes, one, two, three, four, five, um, is the limbic. Um, the limbic system, which is on the inside. And when we watched the, the first video in the first learning goal where from the History Channel that was talking about um, the amygdala, that's in there and that's dealing with emotion. So yeah, lobes. Now, um, here's probably the absolute and total most important thing that we're gonna learn in this class. Um, obviously, <laughs> you will use this for the rest of your life. Left-handed people are better than right-handed people. Um, honestly, we can't help it. Um, we're just amazing. And um, yeah, people should maybe worship us or bring us chocolate or worship us and bring us chocolate. Yes, yes. Um, so here, there's this whole thing here, um, this, this idea about um, the left brain and the right brain. And it's actually really interesting, and we're going to be looking at some readings about this. Basically, how it's not as, um, it's not quite as solidly scientifically believed as it once was. So here I am saying, like, oh, I'm left handed, um, and I'm better. Uh, that does not mean that I'm left brained or I'm sorry, right-brained, because everything is reversed. Um, and just because you might be right-handed does not mean you're left-brained. Also, we've kind of found that maybe things aren't really like this, that creativity only comes on one side of your brain. Actually, probably is mixed. So this is a, a little bit of a dated kind of thing, the idea. But I can tell you one thing, that um, when I am moving my left hand to write or draw or give people high fives. It is the, um, did I say my left hand? I hope I said my left hand. When I'm doing stuff with my left hand, like the snapping, um, it is my right side of my brain that is controlling that. Same thing, when I'm moving my right hand, it's my left brain. Weird, weird. So there's this whole idea, and like I said, it's, it's starting to not be seen um, quite as truthful and so when I have you guys read those articles I want you to kind of evaluate this so there was this idea that on the right side this is where you are um, you're giving holistic thought and you've got intuition and creativity and if you're good at art and music that that goes on that side and then the left brain that's analytical and math and science and logic and language uh, like I said it's kind of starting to change 
Um, so we are going to put this down, but like I said, we're going to be reading about this and talking about this a little bit more. And I'm actually going to have you guys do a quiz, to see which side of the brain you are more. And one of the things I've kind of found out is that it's all kind of bupkis. Why am I making you do this when they're kind of saying now that it's not quite correct? Um, well, I think it's really important that we talk about this idea of how psychology is a science and how things are evolving, and also the idea behind pseudoscience kinds of things. You know, so just because, you know, um, it's an old wives' tale does not make it true. Just because um, something is proved now doesn't mean that it will always be so in the future. Psychology is absolutely evolving. Um, Obviously, the one thing we do need to know is that left-handed people are better than right-handed people because we're awesome. Um, so yeah, and so this is another kind of picture there. Um, now, we do want to talk a little bit about split brain experiments. And this, this is the real deal. So, um, so they've done these studies of patients who have had surgery to cut their corpus callosum. Um, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of it in a second. And after surgery, these guys are... are they seem fine. They're walking, talking, you know, reading. They're, they're doing what they, they like to do um, and what they like to do before the surgery. The thing is they have a hard time putting together the, the visual and verbal information. And so right here, guys, so imagine we've got the brain, and I wish you could see my hands. I need to work on this for videos in the future, obviously. But imagine that I'm taking with my finger and I'm spreading, spreading apart the brain here. And I'm exposing this part right here, which is the, the thing that connects the two hemispheres of the brain. And that's the corpus callosum. And so people that have severe epilepsy, severe seizures, um, they've actually cut into this and separated it. And so you still have all your parts of the brain, but messages aren't going back and forth as well. And we're actually gonna do an experiment with this in class um, where I make you split your brains. It's awesome. Um, so it's one of those things where if I'm holding up um, you know, a piece of sign, a piece of paper kind of thing that on the left-hand side says key and the right side says ring, that the, the, the speech part of my brain is going like this. See, it's it's because everything's reversed. So the speech part is kind of seeing ring, whereas the 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 visual part is going this way. And so you're holding this up, and yes, you know that this is a key. You know it, but because the language part is focusing here, you're saying ring which is kind of funky. Um, like I said, we're gonna do an experiment with that in class and see kind of what ends up happening with that. Oh, and I just mentioned this because I can't help myself. Um, my, my, <laughs> my brother has epilepsy, and so um, I just like to talk about seizures just kind of briefly. Um, no, it's not a psychological issue, but I do want to say to you, oh my goodness, um, please, 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 never, ever, ever put anything in the mouth of somebody that's having a seizure. Um, it's very, very dangerous. Just try to let them kind of have their seizure, get them on their side so that any fluid that collects in their mouth, um, it can just kind of collect in their cheek so they won't choke on it. And um, try to hold them so that they won't, you know, wrap into anything and hurt themselves. But oh my God, please do not put anything in their mouths. And then again, I, I feel like I'm like family psych woman. Um, you know, we've got um, strokes, and my father had a stroke um, a few years ago, and so it is an issue with the brain where you have a blood clot. It's almost like having a heart attack in your brain kind of thing where, um, you know, that, that blood clot happens. So my dad, we could tell what part of the brain he was impacted by because he um, his left side of his face was drooping and he couldn't move his left hand afterwards. And so the we knew from that that it was his right side of his brain. Now, strokes can be very dangerous. You can die from a stroke because you need your brain to function. And if you're brain dead, you can't function. Um, 
And also, it can be very debilitating. And one of the things they found afterwards is it takes a while to kind of relearn some of those skills. So my dad, you know, he had to do, he was in the hospital for a month where he was going through all kinds of physical therapy and stuff, learning how to talk right again and to move right again. He had to learn how to sit and get up and walk around and all this stuff. Um, and so there's all kinds of studies talking about uh, the various impacts that can happen from this, um, including depression, um, things like how music um, actually makes connections grow quicker. So they have them listen to a lot of music. It's really, really interesting. Again, we're not taking notes on this. This isn't anything that we have to know for this class. I just, they're near and dear to my heart because my bro, my dad. All right, folks, that is it for this portion. Um, please make sure if you have any questions that you ask me and uh, see you next time.